Um, you want to do King and Queen of the Ring? Sure, sure, sure. We can talk about that. I um. I mean, I mean, like we're so it's, it's so soon to me, three weeks after the Leon France show. And then they're doing another one in three weeks in Glasgow where they already announced it's uh, Drew McIntyre and um, Damien Priest, which we already knew, you know, I mean, right. knew that. Um, I, so so it's like Leon, I thought was was a great show. This show, I thought, was a show, just a show. Um, it was a show. It was. Um, the, the the stuff I mean, you know, Gunther and Randy Orton was real good. It was real good, but it's no better than any other match. I mean, I've probably seen ten matches as good in the last two weeks. I mean, it was real good. Um, Cody Rhodes and Logan Paul was very good, but it couldn't touch Cody Rhodes and AJ. But still, very good. And then the rest of the show, I wouldn't, you know, um, the, the three way was good. You know, the three way is good. The um, and the other the other ones were the women's matches. Nia Jax and, Ty, and um, Lyra Valkyria. Uh, to me was nothing at all. I mean, just, uh, I can't say I expected a great match, but it was less than I expected. No, it was. It was a 1970s Andre the Giant match. Yeah. She, Nia Jax wrestled like Andre the Giant used to. Yeah. She's Andre the Giant. Yeah. And then the uh, women, the tag, the women's tag team title to me was, oh, you know, a, b below average. You know, I mean, there was some... Some stuff that wasn't quite there, and the other thing that threw that threw me off, and 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 I would say the same thing for the um the, the Becky Lynch and um and Liv Morgan match where Liv won the championship um due to the interference from Dominic Mysterio, even though Dominic Mysterio was trying to screw Liv Morgan, you know, it backfired. But the one thing Becky Lynch, and I mean, you know, it's like it's like it's nobody's fault. They've got to dress the way they've got to dress, which is another thing I want to get into later. But but um, she looked like an usher at a play, you know, and mm -hmm. she seemed as Becky Lynch. She seemed so uncomfortable working in that thing that she was just off a lot early. I mean, and after a while it got better, but I don't think that they ever got to where, you know, they were expecting to get, I mean, I just thought the match was fine, but it wasn't, I wouldn't call it good. I would say it was all right. Yeah. The, the women's tag I thought was like slight, very slightly below average, you know, um, you know, when you had like, um, you know, Indy's not that great. Jade's not that great, really, even though she's got the presence and even, you know, covered from head to toe. She still she still exudes the charisma. I'll give her that. You know, it's not just the body because the body was totally covered up and she still the people took to her as a star and oh, yeah. she, she carries herself like a star. And, you know, she's still limited in what she can do. I thought the match was you know, so, so, and, um, you know, I mean, that's, that's the whole show right there. Um, so, I mean, it starts with the, uh, the tag team title, women's tag team title. And, you know, the one thing it's like there, you know, I, I haven't seen, um, if there's criticism, but if this was AEW, people would just be saying Tony Khan was the worst booker in the world because they literally just on Monday had a match where the winner was going to get the women's tag team title. And the people who won were Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark. So now we're on the pay-per-view show. And it's Candice LeRae and, and uh, Indy Hartwell, who haven't beaten anyone, who haven't done anything at all, you know, um, getting a shot. And obviously they were there to lose. And they did. They were there just to put over Bel Air and, um, and um, Cargill. And they did, a, they did a different finish than they've been doing. Uh, what was the deal? It was... Um, um, it's they do basically it's like the Shoto, you know, that Goto and uh, Hiroki Goto and Yoshihashi use, and then finally a kind of a wheelbarrow suplex by um, Jade on Candice LeRae. But um, they called it a Japanese Ocean Cyclone suplex, which it absolutely was not. And Corey Graves is usually really good at this, but it just wasn't that. It was a, a wheelbarrow suplex. And the, the finish, I like the finish. The finish was good, but the match I thought was just so so. And then. Um, um, what was it? They, uh, that was pretty much it. Then they had, um, oh, this is, I'm actually at the wrong thing. I was looking at the, uh, my SmackDown notes. Um, so, um, then yeah, Becky Lynch and, uh, and, uh, Liv Morgan and, um, um, uh, Dominic Mysterio comes out right as, Becky Lynch has the match one. 
And he's there to help Becky Lynch because the idea is, is that he's trying to get revenge because it was Liv Morgan who was injured. Um, uh, uh, what's her name? Um, you know, uh, mommy. And then, um, then um, what was it? So, so, so he throws in the chair, um, the ref misses it. And um, Liv Morgan ends up DDTing Becky Lynch on the chair and hitting oblivion to get the win. So she wins, won the championship. Um, you know, Becky Lynch was never meant to be the champion in the first place. You know, it was supposed to be Rhea Ripley all the way through and yeah. probably Rhea Ripley defending here. But, uh, you know, it fell, just fell through um, with Rhea Ripley's injury. Sami Zayn, Bronson Reed, and Chad Gable, they did some really cool stuff. Um, you know, I mean, um, you know, all three are very good at what they do. Um, and, yeah, some very creative spots. I didn't really like the finish too much. Um, I mean, it was very much, I mean, I understood where it was coming from. It was basically Otis was there and it, you know, plays into the storyline they were doing. Otis was there and Otis closed line Bronson Reed. And then, um, you know, he tells Otis to close line Sami Zayn and he just won't do it. And he asks him again, he won't do it. And then Gable gets mad at him, starts slapping him and asks him to do it again. He's holding Sami Zayn. And of course, you know, he comes, Finally, he held up once when he does the clothesline. The next time he runs, he's doing the clothesline. Sami Zayn drops. He nails Chad Gable. Chad Gable's out. And then um, um, Bronson Reed had been taken out earlier with – um what was the spot where they took him out? Um, it was Will, Will Otis when Otis took him out with the clothesline. So then um, he ends up all groggy in the ring. Sami Zayn hits the halluva kick and pins uh, Bronson Reed and – that's the match. So uh, kind of like, um, you know, the whole finish was all based on Otis, but you know, that was the TV storyline and everything. Um, but yeah, a lot of, I mean, this is a real, this was a real good match. Um, Nia Jackson, Lyra Valkyria, uh, pretty much like Lyra got a beat, brief bit of offense, but it was pretty much Nia Jax just killing her. The finish was nice looking because um, um, Lyra, um, went for a power bomb and Nia Jax just basically fell on her with the annihilator and got the pin, but there wasn't nice finish, but not much to the match at all. And then of course that means that uh, Nia Jax will be wrestling Bailey for the championship at SummerSlam, which by the way, SummerSlam's got 45,000 tickets out. So they're doing um, in, in like uh, a little over a week, maybe a week. So um that's going to be a big, that's, that is, a, it's already a huge success. And then, um, um, what was it? Yeah, Paul Levesque came out, gave Nia Jax a crown. She kind of kneeled to him and she vowed to be the next champion. So then we had Orton and Gunther and the fans were singing Randy Orton's song. They played that song. It felt like, how long did that song go? It had to have gone like seven minutes. I mean, I didn't time it, but it's I like did. over... Every time I'm sitting there going like, okay, it's the last bar. Then they played again and they played it again and they played it again. And I mean, it was cool because the crowd would, would, they would only sing the, um, the one, the one verse, right? Like they'd be quiet. They'd be quiet. I mean, some people would sing the whole song, but, and then it would be like, you know, the big verse at the end. And um, I hear voices in my head, but you know, that one, and they're all singing it over and over and over again. It's actually a pretty cool atmosphere. Um, and I, was, I thought, I thought the Saudi crowd was obviously excited, but I thought at times they intentionally hijacked it. When you compare it to Paris, it felt like like natural excitement. I, I actually didn't think Paris was natural excitement. I thought Paris was people just trying to have fun because there were a lot of matches in Paris where it was in Lyon. In Lyon, it wasn't Paris. But there were a lot of matches in Lyon where, where the crowd's going crazy, but not for the match. They're going crazy for their chance. I felt, I felt like... Randy Orton selling all the injuries. Right. With a different audience, that would have been a more dramatic sounding crowd. Agreed. Just, tons of cheers. And I thought that atmosphere hurt that match. And I thought that crowd, more often than not, hurt the various matches rather than help them. Um I, I, I did not I did I did not see the crowd. The crowd was loud and, and everything. But um, I thought the crowd helped the Becky Lynch match. Oh, yeah. 
I would say that because she was very, very over, and it was a, and it was there was she's a lot a of sloppiness to it that they just totally overlooked. She's uh, a stoop. Yeah, but um, yeah, in this match, um, it did not it did not create the full dramatic atmosphere that Randy Orton's performance was trying to create. I would totally agree with you on that. Um, I thought the match was really, really good. And um, Randy, Randy worked his ass off for Gunther. Yeah, he did. He, he did. sold his ass off. Yeah. The other thing that's so, it's like Randy Orton is so deceptively huge because actually Gunther looks small next to him. You know, yeah. I mean, it's like, I mean, I mean, I, I always think of Gunther as being 6'4", just because he looks big next to everyone else. But Randy's a real 6'4", and Gunther's really only 6'2", you know? And, you know, Randy was much bigger. I mean, the thing also with Randy is, is like, Randy's like 35 pounds heavier than he was when he was in his 20s. Yeah. You know what I mean? And nobody's like that. I mean, you know, just whatever. Well, he's, he's not fat, and don't get me wrong, but young Randy Orton was so you know, slim yeah. and had such a flat stomach. And now it's not, it's not flat. He's not flat. Well, he's, he's in his forties. I know he's what I'm saying. 40s. Because it's so different from his young frame. It's very noticeable. Agreed though. Agreed. Yeah. I, I, I don't think the trunks are flattering on him at all yeah. for that very reason. Um, but you know, again, he's in his, he's in his, he looks, he looks phenomenal. Um, he's in his forties. But I do, I, I do think, even though I can't say um, that his wrestling isn't as good, I, I everyone's got their their right weight. You know, what I mean, I remember when I was in in high school and we had this track coach, and you know, talking about people going up and down in weight for different sports like football or whatever. And he goes, "The one thing is, is that everyone's got their their right weight, and even if you go up a weight or two weights by lifting weights like crazy and eating like crazy." And you kind of get that big bloated look. It's you know, and 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 if you're a football lineman, that that's maybe even be necessary. But for athleticism, you are sacrificing athleticism when you go up in weight past your normal weight. And I do think that you know, there's no need for Randy Orton to be 270 pounds, or I mean, he probably is. Like they announced him at 275, and I could just say like Drew McIntyre, I know hovers between 260 and 266. Okay, that's his usual yeah. weight. Randy's bigger than him. So Randy probably is 275. And Randy really, you know, 235, 240 is probably his best weight. He but yeah, he doesn't need it. I don't know what he doesn't, he doesn't need it. He looks, but I mean, whatever. You know, it's like I'm I'm not criticizing his wrestling and and he no. can still he still wrestles great because he's he's fundamentally a super wrestler. I mean, that's and he's always yeah. been. He's fundamentally a super wrestler. He and he's always had great instincts. Well, great. He, he doesn't waste any movement. Every no. movement means something. Um, every movement is done really slick. Um, he doesn't take unnecessary risks, which sometimes like he he doesn't necessarily. You'll to me, I don't think that you ever have this Randy Orton match where you know, like you just go, "Oh my God, this match is incredible." But you always have a good, you know, you almost always have a good match. I mean, I'm sure there's been matches with some people that weren't as good as others, obviously. But, you know, Gunther, you know, hit him hard. He took the chops. He doesn't need to, and he did. And I thought they had a really good match. So the deal is, is the um, the finish was um, Randy Orton, you know, and he's selling his, um, he's selling his, was it was it mostly his ribs, right? Or was, um, was and his leg. I think he's injured leg too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, he was doing that and Bel Air was doing that. And, uh, but anyway, so he's doing that. And then um, he hit an RKO, couldn't follow up on it the first time. Um, then he hit a second RKO late in the match. And um, Gunther actually kicked out. And then Gunther crucifixed him and uh, pinned him. And Randy's shoulder was up. And they didn't really play it up at all. I mean, it was very, you know, you could see it. Um, Corey Graves kind of makes this mention, but they don't really, they show a replay, but at a bad angle. So you don't actually see it and, and, and everything. But later after the show, Paul Levesque does this interview and basically goes, um, oh, we were so excited. The ref missed it, but I didn't even know there was, people were telling me there's a controversy. I didn't even know there's controversy. Came back, watched the replay. It's like, there is no controversy. Randy Orton's shoulder was up. And he just goes, but Randy's pretty beat up right now. But when Randy's ready, 
we're going to do a rematch. So I presume that they're going to do a Randy Orton Gunther rematch. I don't see Gunther beating Randy Orton twice, which is weird because I would have figured, you know, like right now, the idea would look to be Gunther um, against uh, the winner of Priest and McIntyre at SummerSlam. And I expect, I thought that Gunther was getting his title shot in Berlin, not, you know, which makes the most sense. But then he would have to lose in Berlin or, or win the title. Um, but they're clearly going to do a Randy Orton Gunther rematch. And I, 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 you know, so it feels like, you know, Gunther's match is going to be at SummerSlam and that Randy Orton and Cody Rhodes will have a match, which I figured is going to be the main event at SummerSlam. Um, that maybe uh, Randy Orton gets for beating Gunther when they do the rematch. But whatever it is, they're definitely doing a Randy Orton Gunther rematch either at the next pay per view or or Germany. So it's probably the next pay per view because I I don't think that should be. It's too weird for Germany because then you're going to have that split crowd because the European crowd just love Randy Orton, and in Germany they're going to love Gunther. So I think that's a bad place to put the match. Whereas in Glasgow, um, you know, Gunther can be the heel in that match. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.